Okay, uh, we are now live with uh, Renee. This is Art Night with uh, Renee Little. She's beaming in from Oklahoma and uh, letting us kind of uh, watch her go through. She does uh, uh, regular paint nights. I think they're the first Monday and the last Monday, but we'll let her uh, la to tell us all about it. Um, okay, so this is the Reinventing the Tattoo Network, uh, beaming out primarily through the Reinventing the Tattoo app. So uh, you might be watching this on Facebook or YouTube, or you might be watching it on the app, but one way or another, uh, go to the app stores, download it, give it a, a good review if you like it. Feel free to send us your critiques. But right now, uh, as we're launching the app, it's a great time to, to give us a review. So the la and we're streaming all the time. So feel free to, uh, well, like I said, uh, to, uh, uh, beam in, check it out. The, the last stream that we did er uh, earlier today was the nine o'clock in the morning, Monday morning, nine o'clock Eastern. Uh, Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network does a uh, reinventing drawing group. And it's always fun to have other people beam in. And uh, like this, actually, if you are drawing and would want to, then go to the Reinventing the Tattoo app and there's a go to the events section and there's a, a Zoom link. Actually, let me share the screen here because it helps me remember what I'm talking about during this intro as well as gives you something to look at. Okay, so this is the, if you go to community.reinventingthetattoo.com um, is the web version. And we're going to check out the event schedule here while I check to make sure that we are actually actively streaming out on the YouTubes. And it looks like we are. Okay, so this uh, the next event coming up is on uh, Tuesday. That's uh, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern. We have a Tattoo Machine Madness, and until we change the name, that's what it is. It's going to be a machine builders panel, uh, Tony Urbanic. Uh, Veritas Irons, uh, Carson Hill, uh, Guy Aitchison going to be moderating and they're going to be talking tattoo machines. And if there's enough interest, we'll do this once a month. We know there's enough interest. We're already booking in the next month. Uh, but yeah, uh, Tuesday at one o'clock, uh, that is going to be, uh, available here at the, uh, reinventing the tattoo app on Thursday at 12 noon is the tattoo collecting podcast. Uh, Fawn Baker and Jordan Rukas talk to tattoo collectors. We love uh, amplifying and having all these channels talking with tattooers and artists. It's uh, even more fun, not even more fun, it's also fun to listen to amazing collectors. And some of them are tattooers, of course, but we have straight up uh, non tattooer collectors and hearing their stories about how they make the tattoo pilgrimages and find their tattooers and work on their body suits and, and the mistakes that they've made uh, are lessons that everyone can learn. People that are just getting into tattooing uh, should definitely check it out. It's great for tattooers who want to hear, uh, you know, the stories from tattoo collectors so they can understand that mentality a little bit more from, from straight up tattoo collecting mentality. Anyways, uh, tattoocollecting.com, I believe, is the website. If you check out their channel, then uh, you can see all of their replays. It's every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern. Every Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern, we have another drawing group. And you know what? We have so much stuff going on. I don't want to bombard you and make it sound like it's uh, too much. Just go and check out the event schedule and you will see for yourself. I'd love to plug a couple sponsors who make this free content possible. Uh, Inkjetstencils.com. They have a setup where tattooers can work digitally on their uh, reference material and then print out their stencils straight from a printer and it's a, a continuous ink. You can refill it so you don't have to throw away all the plastic uh, with all the ink cartridges. And let's see, Andre Malcolm has been printing out like back pieces and sleeves and shit uh, all in one piece. It's pretty amazing. He's got like an oversized printer that's hooked up to the system. So check out his videos either on his Instagram uh, or in the app. He's got a couple of videos, uh, inkjetstencils.com. Then Cheyenne Tattoo Machine has is a giveaway that we're giving away like literally any minute now. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll be posting this up on a live stream, but the uh, tattooeducation.com slash giveaway is a vetting form. You have to be a tattooer. Even if you're already vetted, uh, plug in your info so that we know that you're interested. And 
Oh, 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 I'm also going to show a featured post while we're here in the app, and we'll see who gets to show up. So uh, one of the features of the app is the My Feed here, and um, let's see, we have Melissa's uh, final for this week's elements. So Melissa Sink is a reinventing subscriber. She, everyone's been working on their different four elements, and at 9 o'clock tonight after we uh, end, or not end this, after we end this, um, we'll be shifting over to the... Uh, uh, subscribers where everything gets critiqued uh, this is the plug for the art jam we have jason's uh four elements back piece guy Aitchison's, uh, uh he's gonna do a 30-day challenge with strata easel challenge it's pretty awesome to uh check out all of the the different work here joe king i'm uh awesome. it's really psyched to see joe on the uh, from oracle tattoo gallery on the feeds here and I'm going to keep going down until we see, ah, here we go. T. Von Krieger's, his back piece entry here. Boom. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, check out the app down, give it a download and, uh, Oh, there we go. Here we, uh, now we're back to checking out Renee's work. So, uh, I'm going to click the stop video. You, you might hear my voice in the background relaying messages from the chat room. If this is working for you, please let us know. And if you want to beam in, then you know, give us a shout or check out the event link. The Zoom link is in the app. And uh, yeah, here we go, Renee. Thank you very much for uh, hosting another art night. Uh, thank you very much, Gabe. Um, this is a, a, a little bit of a different of an art night, but it's my pleasure. Um, I usually host them here in person in my tattoo studio in Oklahoma City. Um, but since COVID is, you know, still on the rise, um, I've really, really liked uh, the Zoom feature of us just using technology like we can and be safe and keep our social distancing. My studio is pretty big, but um, it's still kind of nice to be able to hear everyone's voice like they're close, you know. Um, but um, yeah, I've been painting for over 25 years. Um, so longer than I've been tattooing. I've been tattooing for about 15 years. Um, I just started out real young and then um, continued on with school and things like that. Um, but uh, I mostly paint uh, like aquatic creatures and space and kind of more sci-fi uh, creepy monsters. So I figured tonight we'd do some octopuses and some space. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, while I was testing this out, did you uh, let people know uh, what your what medium you're working in? Or is this oils oh, uh, or acrylics or? Uh, this is acrylic right now. Um, I'm doing an underpainting, so I'm using some clear gesso, and I'll use some regular white gesso, but um, I start off with a pre-gessoed board, um, and this is um, uh, it's a pastel charcoal um, for black, and I kind of can get it wet and work with it um, with the clear gesso so I can really kind of pre-tune in my textures that I want to do. Um, I really love to work in layers and layers and layers and layers. So the, yeah, I'm an underpainting kind of girl. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so. Uh, jo uh, Jack Holtman and Frank DeMeo just uh, reacted to the video on one of the channels. It's fun to see the from people from uh, all around the world tuning in. Oh, very cool, very cool. Well, hello guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Usually I'm painting and like drinking with a bunch of people and just like having laughs. So this is, you know, very cool that people are listening. Um, yeah, I can't wait to have some people on here with me. But Gabe, you're wonderful. You're a wonderful conversationalist. So thank you. Uh, no problems. You. It's uh, fun to watch all of the different uh, activities go on all the time. It's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I really that? like the. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, I was talking with uh, uh, Frank Reddy. He was listening to the video that you did with Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, that was a great interview that you did with. Uh... Oh, yeah. What did you think about that? I wanted to ask. Like, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was. Oh, like... absolutely. Yeah, it was slamming. That was, that was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it was so much fun, um, especially even just to see, you know, such an old buddy like that. It was really, really nice. 
but I think we like hit some really cool topics and uh, you know, I think that's just really important. Like it was wonderfully zany to me that I got to actually like speak about that kind of thing. It was pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, people kind of stay on target, but you know, it's a pretty broad target and, you know, pu pushing in a positive direction and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously dealing with all the different, you know, insanity, uh, and, and, and trying to do it again in a, in a positive, productive manner. But, you know, you know, some of those stories were crazy, you know, and, uh, it's good for people to understand exactly what's going on out there, you know? Uh, oh, absolutely. Um, and especially, I mean, our community is so tiny and it's, um, it's been through some really you know, zany stuff, as I call it, it's the zany stuff. Um, but even right now, it's like just the like trying to adapt, you know, from how it was to it, like the type of type of tattooers that are coming out these days, and also like how the world is. It's pretty impressive. Um, I don't know. I like that we like the the duality of like the the old school nature versus you know uh, college educated. <sighs> art snobs coming out and I'm like this is wonderful let's watch the chaos unfold you, um, you know absolutely it's uh, I'd rather uh, well I've, watching it from zoom in my office here is a little bit nicer sometimes but uh yeah you know it's uh awesome to see uh, the shift and how um it's a dual sword right like you can get so much information so quickly that you could, that you, you know, a lot of those barriers are, you know, have been taken away. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, then, then people do lose a little bit of the respect about how it was, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I appreciate how quickly it needs to change. Uh, absolutely. Um, Cause it needs to change quick and there's parts that need to change quicker than others. Right. Uh, but uh, change takes time, you know, or, um, like a, a possible change that will stick, right. you know, it takes time. Um, and I think that the new generation coming in, they're not quite realizing that it, it needs just a little bit more time in the oven. And um, yeah, they it's, I, mm, it's like, the, it's so unbelievable to them. And that's unfortunate because they're not seeing where their coworkers are coming from. Um, it, it used to be absolutely 100% fucking insanity. I mean, the, 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 the laws of supply and demand were completely in the favor of the tattooer, like so much so that, you know, the tattooers could do almost anything. They could do almost, they did anything. They did anything. And, uh, oh, I know. Uh, the uh, fact that, you know, again, so, so just bringing any outlaw craft into a respectable mainstream, like, you know, still want to keep the character, uh, but got to leave out any of the toxic can't, you know, no one, mm -hmm. uh, that transition is going to be ugly and dirty. It's, oh yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, it's got a, it's, it's really exciting to see happen. And again, hearing stories like yours, hearing stories like Harry Barber's to be able to, uh, you know, or, or Thea does, there's a lot of people that have, come through to talk about just, uh, you know, I mean, I guess ultimately we're all just talking about the way we want it to be. Mm -hmm. I love Carrie, actually. I remember uh, actually with Frank and we went to the Explorers conference awesome. in LA and I, everyone was really scared to talk to Carrie, but that was like the one person I wanted to talk to. And really, I just wanted to drink drinks and have a vacation and talk to Carrie Barbara. <laughs> That was the whole point. I was like, yeah, I, like it was great. Like, it was a great seminar. Like I got to meet DJ uh, Tambi and like oh, that, no. yeah. uh, wonderful human. Absolutely. Like could read a room in a second. And I think we locked eyes and like just that we're instant friends. Um, and then Tony Moore, he was really, really oh, yeah, cool yeah. human. Him and his so wife talented. were freaking amazing. It's so funny. That's oh, yeah, a man yeah. that you can have like a beer with by a fire, you know, like you can just have a moment of silence and he'd be like, yep, yep. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. He did uh, um, one of the art 
speech. What was uh, what's the uh, he he's been doing the graphics for a fucking a Tyler. Who, who, who's the band that he works? With? He's the guy who's been working with Tyler or somebody. Oh, ye, I know what you're talking about because I saw it. Um, the guys and I couldn't great. tell you. I've been listening um, yeah. to him. But yeah, that's cool. Some the Explorer cool conference is uh, looks awesome. It's you know, you know, clearly a stellar lineups and uh, you know everybody's experience there seems to be pretty you know pretty fantastic. Yeah, there's. I mean, of course, I have like a you know, um, I'm, I'm like a cookie. I have both sides. You know, like not, there's always a nice gray area where I'm like, yeah, I mean, there are some things that I would like to see like a little bit more progressed or, you know, some. I mean. It, a lot of times, big names don't make good education. Oh, you know, absolutely. For things. Sure. Um, Although, but it uh, was a, critiques mm, should go, you know, to you know, critiques go to the uh, to them, right? Uh, oh but, yeah, and the critiquing was yeah, uh, actually the best part. Um, oh yeah, cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good. Like, um, if the if it was all critiquing the entire time, that would be brutal and that would be rad, you know, and how they would organize that i don't know i'm not the person but, no, no no i'm uh, just saying no. well like any point being okay so let's see here uh, uh mike Cole says looks like a pretty good start this is uh oh, thanks mike thank you yeah, this is mike owner founder of temple tattoo uh not not thank the you. geo guy oh, okay. well, I, I would, still, uh, th thank you I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he gets uh gets that uh, a fair amount obviously it's a Oh yeah, I've met the I've met the Geo guy. He's pretty nice too. But. Yeah. Oh, Litos is on board. He says, "What's up?" Oh, hello. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Litos from Forbidden Images. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Welcome. He's got a uh, awesome shop down in Florida. Yeah. Uh, where in Florida? Oh shit. Uh, let me get it right. It's Forbidden Images. Let me fire up the. I can fire up. The, you know what? That's why I have the website here. I can fire it right up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trinity, Florida. Yeah. Oh, dang. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, I've got like one little spot each little way up, Florida or down, however you want to see it. Um, Trinity. No. Florida is strange. It's like three different countries in one state. So um, I think it's right above uh, Tampa, maybe, right around the Tampa area. Is Trinity above yeah. Tampa? Okay. Well, yeah, I go to the Ebor area a lot when I go there. But that's now where just, I grew up. No, oh, no, I'm not going there. Oh, you grew up in Florida area? I did, yeah, and I can't tell you where Trinity Florida is. Trinity, uh, yeah, it's near Tampa Bay, Tampa. Oh, what the hey? Okay, yeah, I, I grew up in uh, St. Lido, you want to uh, zoom in? The uh, uh, the links on the uh, on the app. Oh or my I gosh! Could, uh, yeah, I could copy paste it in if you want. Yeah, let's go. Let's go like okay, Jody Burks, uh, you know. Let's see here. Yeah, I always have fun in Florida, actually. No, I don't mean to say it actually me. like that's a surprise. <laughs> but I am. Well, from I'm. I'm surprised. No, I'm kidding. Being, being from New England, but you know, it's uh, I did grow up relatively white trash, so. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm from Florida, so you can imagine. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, that's uh, okay. Uh, no judgment first, here. Uh, copy link address. <laughs> Voila, okay. Jupiter, Florida. I worked uh, I worked some uh, jobs in the Epcot Center. Okay. That was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely drank a lot of cheap beer. Holy Moses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, like Bush Light. I think we used to get like a party cup of it for a dollar at like the local <laughs> pub. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, it was either Bush or fucking oh, Old E, like Quartz of Old E. We would take those to the beach and just get annihilated. Definitely drank a lot of cheap beer. Holy Moses. Oh, yeah, uh -oh. uh, Lido's 
we're gonna have that oh, uh, panic. I think we used to get like a party cup of it for a dollar at like the local. Uh, we're echo panicking our drinking stories about Florida. Or... Exactly. Oh God, it's like a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> so, Litos, uh, if we're playing in the background, you need to mute us. The background mute us. Um, let's see. That's that. That might sound better. Does that work? <laughs> so, Litos, uh, if we're playing in the background, you need to mute us. No, like so, so I think you're streaming us in the background, so that uh, like yeah, ten, so. ten seconds later, we keep hearing ourselves. <laughs> But now you've muted yourself, which is better than echoing, but we can't hear you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> now, you're, now you're muted, so now you're Bye. Hey, Litos, how goes What's it? Up? We're trying to figure it out. <laughs> Hello. I have all the help here I can get. Awesome. Hey, Renee, how are you doing? Awesome. And how are you guys doing? Doing great. Are the local Floridians. Yeah, uh, you were born uh, here? How's Florida? Yeah, in Tampa cool Bay. Like, uh, I grew up in. What was that? Huh. Sorry. Grew oh no, I was a. Uh, I grew up in St. Pete. Yeah, but I was born in Tampa, and I ended up working in Ebor. Nice. That's cool. Hey, uh, just real quick to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean to interject this introduction, but uh, Domenica. Oh shit! To combat Tessa Benabo. Oh shit! We have a viewer from Brazil in the chat room. Huh. Well, nice. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Where in Brazil? Hola. <laughs> Oi, tudo bem? Oh, and then uh, Atomic Injections 47 is listening in, but about to start tattooing. Ah, uh, very nice. Thank you for listening. Um, is there anything that anyone wants to talk to me about? Feel free to ask. Cool, sounds good. Uh, uh, Oliver, uh, who's uh, been beaming yeah. in from uh, Germany, just shared it around. Thank you, Oliver. He's, uh, he did a sick, he's getting oh, some hey, Philip, uh, Philip Blue tattoos uh, on him, but a great, uh, he's from uh, Berlin. Oh, very cool. Hey, yeah, yeah and I, I hear it for Berlin. I hear uh, COVID's been pretty Thank wild you. there this month. So. Take it easy, Berlin. My buddy, I have a couple of buddies that have moved over there and I'm just like, <laughs> You know, they, they were telling me like not too long ago, they're like, oh yeah, none of us have to wear masks. And now they're shutting down again. I'm like, oh, that's just really unfortunate. Yeah, that's insane. My friend in Scotland, they've been closed since March still. And they only allow to oh, get out of the two hours a day. That's it. Sure. Yeah. Like in America, we talk about lockdown. We're not even at lockdown. We're like, you know, move around a little bit and get your family sick. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Some yeah, we have not locked down. I mean, I, it's it's hard to imagine. I want to say that, but it's also not hard to imagine. Just you know, I, I think we've just needed a little bit more organization with it. Um, but that's that's crazy. I just imagine like old town, you know, like plague, uh, the plague streets again, you know, and see like I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's where it all happens. Right. I mean, as artists, we have the blessing of actually being able to have an activity being in closed doors. And but as tattoo, as you know, we like the, uh, you know, the interaction with people, with the clients and everything else. And, and that's the hardest thing. Right, right. I was going to say, yeah. like, well, during the plague, actually, like artists and things like that, actually, like, we're able to capitalize off of a bit because we're so indoors and we make art but yeah the whole interaction with people is what stunts us wow. um, uh, speaking of interacting real quick uh oliver says he's in uh trier not berlin uh, my apologies uh, oh okay but still hey take it easy we also have uh, <laughs> uh, uh, adriana de barros who's uh the editor of uh, scene 360 uh, uh amazing uh magazine editor uh tattoo author lady she's uh, beaming in from portugal Oh, very cool. Hello. Hello, hello. Thanks for beaming in, everybody. I'm an open book. Right now, I'm just doing some octopus, and then we're going to do some space after that. 
merge it all together. So now, Renee, do you have a, a, a plan in mind or do you like to actually just freestyle and actually come up with things as you go? A little, a little of both. I'll pre-plan in pencil really light, kind of where I want things to go. Mm -hmm. um, but then as far as texture and things like that go, I kind of have it in my head and then kind of discover more as I, as I move forward. Sometimes I'll like have a mistake and really like it and then just replicate it a bunch. But I have my, I have my go-tos, like I can just kind of sit and I call it noodling. So I'll just sit and noodle until something looks good. And then I'll go through and really, really clean it up and make it really clear and crispy and intentional looking. Like it's kind of like Bob Ross, you know, like happy little accidents. <laughs> now they have, uh, you know, you guys want to ask because they have a question about what meter you're using. Uh huh. Can you yeah, explain sure. that? Yeah, right now. Um, I'm sorry. Are you using charcoal in, in the paint? Is that what we're seeing for you to get those dark values there? Yeah, really this good. is. Oh, thank you. I'll show you. It's like this. Um, it's charcoal, it's charcoal oil pastel. So it's like charcoal, but then they mix it with a lot denser property. So, uh, and it's all water soluble as well. And it's just a really, really fine black. And when I first found it, I was in love. Like you can literally like just cover this whole thing black. You can like smush it around. Like you can see like that, like how soft it is. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just take it and use it as my black value, you know, and I'll just go in and so I can make my darks and then even I can like take a wet brush and just kind of like rub it off and I'll just start lifting up like that and that can make a texture too, which is really awesome. cool. Yeah, like uh, I did a whole series um, of revelations with this shit and it just looks gnarly and rich, you know, like it just looks brutal. Um, and then, but I, when I'm working with it, like I'll either use water or I'll use a uh, clear gesso. And so it kind of like gives it a nice layer. So when I put on color, um, like I, I will do some tones of color with it, but when I do oil painting, it has like all that prime surface already too, but basically everything's like worked out. Um, but yeah, this stuff's great. And it adds really cool texture to like, I like like subtle textures, you know, I'm not like a- You're making it look uh, more, but it, it looks great. Thank you for explaining that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I love turning people onto this stuff because it's just fun and gritty. I don't know, makes it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> so uh, Oliver is beamed in here, fucking sick ass uh, painting here. Hey. Oh, very cool. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that's Man, beautiful. that looks amazing. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, I Thank love you. that. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Look see for you. <laughs> that looks so cool. I love yeah, the that little looks amazing, tension man. around its eyes. Yeah. True. The little flower with little budlet groupings on the bottom are really nice. And those veins and texture like coming from the eyes are really cool. Well, I couldn't do it any bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it looks beautiful, yeah. man. I started yesterday. It's just an underpainting. Oh, yay, underpainting night. <laughs> yeah. I try to uh, do oil on top, but I need an underpainting. Yeah, same. I'm doing the same. It's Yes, yeah, so I tried to do I, the same thing with tattooing. I agree. To get the values and everything else, and, you know, sometimes depending on the piece that I'm doing, I, I like to actually start with black and gray value tones to get depth and then where I can get away as long as it's planned out I like to put the colors just almost like a, a, a painting but obviously we have limitations on the skin uh, but I also yeah. like to do that it enriches the depth a lot on darker tones when you do mm -hmm. that it works for me anyway oh mm -hmm. yeah no I've <laughs> Uh, with large pieces, I really like doing that. It's kind of like you give them a taste, especially if it's full color, like, like you give them a taste of what it's going to look like and everything's kind of preset. <laughs> I love that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Del Porto Porto says, 
Uh, well, this is a Portuguese translation. What a top, everyone. Uh, I don't know, Lidos, could you check out the uh, tattoos.com Facebook and translate some Portuguese? Yep. Uh, where do I go? Go tattoos.com? It's uh, on a Facebook. Okay. Let me on see the, if I can uh, the screen. I guess what is up? I guess maybe. What a top, everyone. Well, primo. Everyone's a top. Uh, yeah. Hope it gets, uh, let's see. Uh, what? Nice tattoo, says Kwaoi. Uh, I'm really horrible with a pronunciation. So there's, there's people saying nice things in the in, in the Facebooks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Facebook. Facebook page, yeah. All right. Hold on, Gabe. I'm getting there. Awesome. Yeah, no, I don't think I need this far, right? No, I don't reckon you would. All right. We have, uh, let's see, uh, Jose says hello in the uh, YouTubes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll search next to the Facebook. Logo, okay. Tattoos.com. Okay. All right. Go, that that uh, good old Facebook. One group I am here to help you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. I've, I've been doing my best to stay like I get on Facebook for about a minute or two a day to check messages uh, to make sure I don't miss opportunities. Same thing with the Instagrams. But because we're streaming out all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm telling people, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not even on Facebook anymore. And people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're on like four hours a day. <laughs> well, I, same thing. I always hit like, uh, I have a dual share system. So if I share it on Instagram, it's immediately shared at Facebook. Yeah, and yeah. I, I tell you, I miss everything because I never even think to check Facebook. Like, I, I just don't, I don't know. Like, I've never been really interactive with it. Yeah. Uh, it frustrates me so much because I really want to be off completely, but there are opportunities that present themselves and that mm -hmm. I wouldn't have caught if I wasn't on my fucking Facebook. So exactly. Uh, I would have siblings that would grow up and I would never see a picture of them uh, if it weren't for Facebook, you know, <laughs> I mean, so yeah, uh, I, try, happen. I try to go there to get the conversation, but actually they actually have to uh, attach me to that. Is that possible uh, okay. to switch here? Because uh, uh, I can't don't worry. All right. It's all good. Just say that they think we're the best. <laughs> yes. Well, they can see that you're doing a good job about <laughs> that. So well, that's good. That, we got a lot of catch up to do with you. So, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it is worth uh, people knowing that uh, it is worth uh, hooking up with the tattoos.com Facebook. Because uh, you know they got a, they got a lot of good action, and for tattooers, if you you've got good quality tattoos, uh, it's it's a good spot on Facebook to, uh, we're, you know we're we you know we pay, but we're very thankful to uh, to be beam out to there. Yeah. Especially now these days, you know, with all the, you know, the interaction that you know, obviously, uh, Gabe guy and. Uh, tattoo education and everything else, all this uh, outlet that mm -hmm. we're putting it together to, to get everybody uh, to have some sense of normalcy, you know, and actually uh, right. concentrate on learning and sharing and, and all that. That's huge, gigantic, you know, psychological help that we all it's need at this huge. time. You know? Well, you yeah, uh, exactly. pinpointed I'm, the- I'm really uh, fortunate that you did that. Right, pinpointing on the focus of uh, really just trying to focus on the art, you know, and inspiring each other to, you know, with what we're doing, what you're doing, and uh, trying to leave as much of the drama and the bullshit behind. And, uh, I'm, you know, at, at first when I was playing around with this app, I was like, wait a minute, there's no place to post like just your own shit. And uh, the people, the developers were a little bit like, that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, but what if people just want to post up something on their own feed? And they're like, they have to stay on topic. And I'm like, oh, yeah, there's always like well, on the app, there's a topic. You're either posting up art or tattoos. You know, there's a community board, but like, you know, there's no politics or food board yet. But mm -hmm. the, the, the point is, it's like all inspiring art, you know, and, the, you know, we could create some off topic boards if we want to. But, uh, you know, just watching, 
you know, again, part of it is that the platform exists, but the, the all the artists that are engaging and again, and zooming in from all around the world. Um, oh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very inspiring, you know, to, to help facilitate. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, um, this is the future is this, you know, this, we have the technology and we just needed someone to be organized with it so we can actually like group together. I've even, even in the, I think the convention scene, we all felt that there was an issue about people coming together and say painting together because there were so many of us, it was hard to even organize us. But I mean, I see like there is a, there is, you know, a, a bright side to all of this is that it forced us to figure it out. And I love the fact that I can like jump on here and like, you know, hang out with artists from all over the world, um, not just my community um, and paint with them. Like, that's just fun. That's like playing in the sandbox to me, you know? Um, and it gives you a sense like, of purpose, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, it's okay. Like, instead of like, you know, there's some people that just wish to go to the bar every day, but like me, I'm just like, oh, that'd be really cool if I can just go sit and like paint with some people or like chat or do some art, you know? It's like, uh, mm, I, I yeah. feel like that was fleeting for a lot of people because we were so tired and so overwhelmed and so, you know. We're doing that but, too here, right, Gabe, with the drunk critique? You don't need to oh, go yeah, to the bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, it, you know, it, it is kind of funny, you know, well, I guess I, I forgot, you know, we talk about a lot of these things again and again, but, um, you know, guy, guy, Guy's been helping facilitate online, you know, or both online events like this, but uh, also art retreats, you know, I, I was just uh, telling the story uh, about how I think it was after the after the second tattoo gathering, I was like, full on, there's no way we're doing a tattoo convention, you know, again. Uh, I, you know, I, I need, I need to stay married. I need to get my head together. I've been drinking way too much to deal with all this shit. And, uh, and, you know, guy and Michelle were like, you have to do this again. you know, Jimmy peaks, a beautiful spot. This is, you know, the, everyone's here to share. There's no, like, there's a very little bullshit. And, uh, there was like, there, again, there was like no way I could do another tattoo convention. And then Michelle, I think was, uh, was like, wait, why don't we do an art retreat? where, you know, all the tattooers uh, have to, you know, we just come and paint. We don't tattoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden I was like, okay, well, maybe I actually, I think we could probably handle, you know, we, we could probably handle that, you know, as a family, as a, as a, as a, as a company, as, you know, everyone painting, not tattooing, you know, the, the level of responsibility just, you know, uh, is much different, you know, when mm -hmm. there's people, you know, we don't have to de deal with people's health and, uh, so, you know, we, we did an art retreat that was like all the, it was, you know, 98% tattooers, uh, but no tattooing. It was just painting. It was, it was like a, the first year was like 125, maybe 130 painter, you know, people coming out to paint. And uh, I, I have to say, uh, I, like, I understand, I feel like I understand energy and I'm not like a mystic at all. Uh, but when, so we did this art, this art retreat it was four days. It was 120, 125 people painting for four days straight. And uh, the first day, everyone was a little confused. Like, what the fuck are we supposed to be doing? Usually we tattoo and it's three days, not four. Uh, the second day, everyone was like, okay, you know, we paint and we take classes and we paint and we take classes. And uh, it was, it was like the third day. And it was, you know, at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I remember this cause my daughter, uh, got up at like 11 o'clock at night and uh from 11 to one o'clock we roamed around and there was like you know of the 135 people there was 100 people painting and this was over the course of uh you know i don't know half a dozen different painting rooms but you could you could literally you could feel the fucking energy you know uh it was different because usually a lot of people paint by themselves kind of alone uh you know and definitely like at the one o'clock to three o'clock in the morning everyone's painting alone uh, mm. but here all of a sudden there was a hundred fucking people painting at one o'clock in the morning together. And, uh, it, it was pretty intense. It was, it was, it was out of control. And again, guy and Michelle's vision of, of, uh, making that shit happen was, uh, uh, point being is, uh, it's, it's amazing that, uh, the technologies and the situation has busted kind of that, you know, that open. So it's not just people that get to these you know, weird locations that you, you might hear of, uh, but everyone can kind of like tune in. And uh, do, you ever, 
do you ever think about doing that again? Like hosting another retreat like that once we, uh, if we ever, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. If, yeah, if we get to that point. But uh, I, re I remember those going on as a young tatter, as I guess, um, uh, with yeah, absolute social anxiety and being like, God, that would be cool. So you should do that again, Gabe. So I can experience uh, that. I, 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 I think that was, uh, I was talking with Mark a little bit about, you know, Jiminy Peak is like right, in, like 10 minutes from Needle Jig. Mm -hmm. And uh, it feels, I'm going to talk to the, I'm going to talk to Jiminy Peak about October of next year. I'll help uh, you put it on. But it, we, we have to figure out like, obviously vaccinations, fucking safety, like, mm -hmm. you know, no one, or no one I know, like, I'm not, like, I don't want to be the first in line to like, you know, have a mass gathering throughout oh my this gosh. Uh, but on the other hand if people are painting we can be outside you know the jimmy peak is a very outside venue um mm -hmm. and i plan on getting vaccinated like you know i'm not gonna be the first in line to get vaccinated but i'll be the 12th in line <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like we're <laughs> trying to look think about when the list is and i'm like well I'm not in any bracket whatsoever that would be considered like um, special or an emergency. So I'm pretty sure I'll be one of the last, but I, I'm like, I'm just counting on that. Maybe the, after they've get all the elderly or the sickly or the immune compromised or, you know, then that may go by blood type or something. Oh, I'm not in any rush. I could do, I could um, hang out in the woods and beam in with everybody for another year or two if necessary. <laughs> Yeah. I have to like be downtown. So I'm like, yeah. I'm a positive. Can someone just stick me with that thing? You know, I'll be fine. Um, all my, I have, a, even my counter girl, she's uh, also a surgical like nurse and she's getting hers. So I have a lot of people in my life that are getting it right now. So we'll see if um, it works or not, you know, hopefully yep. it'll work. Yes. Or the, or yeah. the, but we're not <laughs> my, my hope is uh by by summer july august i've got a uh, tentative not tentative mm -hmm. plans i've got plans to go over to the brussels convention in november and uh oh nice like i said i feel it feels crazy to make some plans but on the other hand it feels safe-ish I am. Yeah, I have not made any plans. Um, and all of my clients nationwide are really awesome. And I, if they, hey, hey, clients, if you're listening, thank you. Um, because I, I, they're all have deposits out there just waiting. Um, some of them are in the middle of, you know, sleeves, some of them are. Um, and, you know, some of them are like, in downtown Chicago. So it's like, uh, I'm not going to come out there for a while. Uh, especially for no conventions like that all of that will be guest spots of course but i just love how everyone's being so patient and understanding that i just haven't wanted to make plans i haven't wanted to make travels you know like i just kind of want to sit in my studio and tap to like my normal people and just paint wait this thing out a little bit because yeah it's i don't know um it's it's good to pre-plan though you know it's, if we put out the energy you know maybe it'll just happen Something else that's necessary too, because we're doing uh, all this, you know, now to uh, fill in the time and fill the void. Um, it, it is our job to actually contact our clients because without them, we're nothing. And oh yeah, exactly. Them to actually be part of this so they can see how much passion and dedication we have behind the scenes, behind closed doors, and we still connect and we hope for the best and and without them you know uh, knowing and seeing this uh it, it it becomes harder for us to kind of move to a different place and I, I think it's very important to try to invite our clients to to be you know supportive of what we're doing right now and continue doing you know for a brighter future for all of us I guess right because I mean we'll all yeah we will reconvene you know, like tattoos will be had. I was supposed to start my back, you know, but I'm not going to Florida. Um, what? What? Did you just say that to me? <laughs> I'm from there. <laughs> Did you just blur that out on you, the you understand. web? <laughs> you understand. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I heard it. 
I'm, I'm Where's not, the I'm love? Not, <laughs> I will eventually come back. My well, entire don't family. Don't start now. There. Yeah, you blew it. That's okay. I'm doing. I'm doing good. Staying <laughs> indoors, not you know. No, I'm not saying. Yeah, Florida, we, have, so. we have to be indoors. We're not saying nothing like that. Yeah, oh yeah, but Florida. No, right now, no, no, not yet. I'll come back. I have to. My entire family's there. It's like yeah, actually, most no, people are like, week, we're going. This week huh? is down to forties for us. Oh, that's nuts. That is nuts. Yeah. That is nuts. I never said 50s it was cold. average this week. Well, Gabe is actually laughing because it's like summer for them there. But it's okay. Oh, right. But for Don't Florida, that's freezing. Yeah, that is freezing. Good thing we have masks. They cover more <laughs> by having them. I'm not complaining exactly. about that. Holy crap, man. It's freezing here. That's so cool. Well, okay, so it's different though. Like the humidity makes it like this unbearable, cold, wet feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fun. Like I can deal with like winter wonderland all day, but like yeah. like Floridian winter is uncomfortable. Right, right. You open the door, yeah, you, take the dogs out, say, you go, do your thing, come back. I'll be right inside waiting for you. Yeah, you're just like covered in dew and frost and like it's just, ugh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I moved out to Oklahoma and it's so dry out here compared. Um, but I mean, it's, yeah, I don't, it's, it's definitely not Florida. I'm definitely an East, an East Coast girl. And it's a little bit fun. Yeah. And I'm, you know, here. when I'm from but, Brazil, it's like, it's, it's very, it, it's actually hotter than here, but doesn't have the humidity. Um, that we have so it's actually be able to get away with mm -hmm. you know a hotter climate but it's not as humid so it, it's beautiful right right and it's it's yeah and it, we're so you know we're below the water or like you know we're we're so low to the ground that mm -hmm. yeah it's like we're in a little like biodome you know right. I just miss gardening in Florida because everything would just grow yeah. um but no, but uh, yeah, that's good. That's at least you have something of a winter. Um, and I'm surprised. I'm nothing crazy this year to four single years. Though it's just been one thing for the next. Um, but, yeah. So okay. See. See here and I'm starting to do like white gesso on top and it already kind of starts blending. And that's yeah, that's how I use that guy. I double click it to see it, but that's this here. But no. I know how to switch. It's that grid at the top right. Oh, this one? Yeah. Ah, okay. Jeez, <laughs> Good thing we have it here. It's like we're trying to figure it out how to get the screen switch here. Just figure it out. And enter full screen. Okay. Trying to do a little better. Yeah, see how the difference? Like, wow. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I like that light perspective there. That's so cool. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Oliver with his tiny painting over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's like you, you're going to run out of white. <laughs> I know. I'm actually just noticing, Oliver, how tiny the brush you use for such a big painting. Wow. I want to see the little I want to see the little details that you're doing in those waves. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's like the same size as my brush. And mine is tiny. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. I like the tiny ones. Mm -hmm. Are you getting the job done? That's what counts. Mm -hmm. no, In the I beginning, I made it very, very big. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <a> very big <laughs> <one>. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's the background? Yeah, those guys. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, man. You boot booted out. That mask is so cool. 
Uh, Blue Rose, the, uh, yeah. one of the attractions in your neck of the woods is that Dolly Museum, huh? Yes. Whew. Oh, yeah. That was out of control. Uh, yeah. Right? Uh, and, um, you know, next time, um, next time you come down, man, we got to go there. Yes, it was uh, seeing his works just uh, massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, every once in a while, I'm just embarrassed at, um, at myself. And I was just like, it was a different experience. Uh, and mm -hmm. then I was like, well, of course, you know, you think that looking at him in the books, you know, for your whole life or in the prints um, is one thing, but seeing that shit like massive to experience it is uh, right. so impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, the, oh, yeah. and the energy that was left behind because that's the actual painting you know and knowing mm -hmm. that came from his brain heart and hands is like crazy yeah. right um, that size so, oh, so uh litos we have the the fellow one of the fellows from the dominican uh, from brazil is uh in the chat room so we could try to bring him in uh, well i guess i'm going to ask to unmute and see if the video will see if see if we can bring him in uh, yeah, from here. Where are you from, Brazil? Oh, Litos. Okay. Florianopolis. Hey, I actually uh, hang glide in Florianopolis before when I was in Brazil. Oh. Hold on a second. Uh, Rio de Janeiro. Beautiful place for Florianopolis. Uh, uh, yeah, Adriana de Barrio says, I uh, can't wait for the conventions. She's the, uh, the magazine writer freelancer oh uh, yeah i bet it's uh i you know i'm always was really curious that they just never made like a reality tv show about the conventions oh good lord like, i know that would have been uh interesting probably would have ruined lives but oh, also would have been it. really entertaining um i guess the person from brazil it doesn't have a mic so uh, that's why he was a typing um glider pilot as well what is a glider pilot oh i don't know i guess like the, uh, hang the gliders to lead them on oh glider pilots oh my god he, he he uh he also hang glides that is cool that is very cool hang glider. yeah hang glider yeah yes they do that off of uh, Mount Tom here in East Hampton. Uh, I'll really? be, yeah. Uh, uh, after things settle a little bit, take the family on vacation. Then I'll start hang gliding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so when, when did you go see the Dolly Museum in St. Pete? Do you remember when? Uh, it wasn't that... <laughs> Previously, but not like very long ago. Uh, Litos, I think I caught up with you. What was well, this? Was like two years ago, maybe? Yeah, you came oh, wow, two okay. years ago, and um, actually, you know, the the Dolly Museum have changed. They remodel everything. That's what I was wondering. Have you seen the new one yeah. or the old one? Yeah, the oh, new. Oh, it's probably one. the new one. I don't even know why I was there. Why was I in Florida? <laughs> Gabe, we went out drinking. That's why I remember that. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> about right. Hey, uh, was it? Must um, have been. Uh, I remember. I remember visiting your shop. I remember uh, hitting the Dolly Museum. I don't remember the. Uh, it wasn't a convention or nothing, but yeah, I don't think. <laughs> that, you know, you well, I mean, out, where right? you? Yeah, I remember all of it. We went out to a beautiful dinner on the on the uh, ocean. <laughs> yeah, which was awesome, man. It's like. You know, having this type of fireplace and everything. Oh, that was badass. That was, uh, yeah, that was tasty. Yeah. That oh, was where great. did you go? Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Actually, uh, I don't know how much. You guys are talking about my hometown. Yeah, so. yeah man. It's like a beautiful place there. And actually, how, what was the last time you were down here? Oh, me? Mm -hmm. um, three, two years. Oh, it's not bad. So you, you've seen the changes, right? Oh my gosh, yes. I still have paintings of um, when they were taking the, pier, the old pier apart. Um, and yeah, no, I remember. And that's why it's like, it's changed so much so quickly. Like, right. 
you know, I always like let people like know how it was. It's like, okay, you remember that really nice place that you're at? Okay. Like five years ago, it was a dump and I was probably, you know, like some crackhead was probably getting drunk by it. You know, it, it's like changed so much and it's like this beautiful little paradise now. It's really something. Yeah, it's really nice. And um, I don't know. No, you probably didn't see it because I think this is new. The, the new pier. You haven't seen I, uh, it? I haven't seen it yet. No, not yet. Yeah, there was a mm-hmm. has been a controversy for for many years about what mm-hmm. to do. And uh, I remember the, the old drawings that they had and they were just like ridiculous. Um, like remember when they like had everyone draw a pier and then they voted and it was it was a mess. But I saw the I saw like a picture of the new one and it looks pretty cool. Uh-huh. Um, my dad was the one that deemed the foundation not stable, so I have I feel very closely tied with that pier. <laughs> um, but it looks really nice. I don't know. Just St. Pete changes every single time I come home. It's like a completely yeah. different place. Now Ebor, that place will never change. <laughs> Gabe, next time you go to Florida, you also have to go to Ebor and just get wasted and lose yourself. Well, I might. I've been known to uh, appreciate that experience in the past. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, Gabe, uh, the guy from Brazil, he was talking about, because he doesn't have a mic, so I'm typing to him. He was uh, asking me about uh, what I thought about the uh, Tattoo Week is the convention they have in Brazil. Oh, week. yeah, that's massive. Yeah, that's massive. So I was telling mm-hmm. him that, you know, it is known for being a very, very good convention. But unfortunately, comparing to conventions elsewhere, here in the States and other places in the world, I think the infrastructure uh, and the organization for, for artists and clients uh, it needs uh, a little little help on that department, uh, but it's so much talent in Brazil, and you know. Uh, yeah, that- it, if, yeah. If, well, it must be tough to uh, figure out the scale. Like that tattoo week's got like, it's like forty to sixty thousand. I don't want to say the wrong number, but it feels like it's a oh tremendous gosh. amount of people. Yeah, what the the comparison is like? They say for I don't know anywhere from. 100 to 350 boots here in the States, let's say from small to big conventions over there, it's like over 600, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's massive. Mm. Yeah, it just, um, I I heard, Mm. you know, quite a few things because I have uh, friends that actually attend the convention. And besides the talent, there's a, you know, especially with COVID now, uh, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Uh, in Brazil, I probably would bet that that will happen this year. And I don't know if it's the right time for that to happen, but in Brazil, you know. It's is it like, in February? When wild, is it? Yeah, it's wild, wild west, man. It's like they, oh. I mean, I, I would say that they'll um, probably jump on and it will be haven't, packed. Who's that? Oh, thank you. Yeah, haven't yeah. they... Um, I don't know how to word this. How, hasn't like the the leadership there just said fuck it? Um, COVID. Hmm. From from last I heard. Yeah. Oh, last oh, I heard, they that. were kind of like. Okay. Yeah. I, um. So that that's ugh. yeah. I guess they'll be the first to jump on that. I mean, maybe not the first, but um. That's yeah. Yeah, that's that would be like us having Philly right now. You know, or the Philly convention, like right now. Even that, that's bigger, isn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, um, I don't know if Philly is actually, what was that? Go ahead, Gabe. Go ahead, Gabe. You know, Philly's huge, it's massive. I'm not mm-hmm. sure that it's, I think that Brazil's Tattoo Week might clock in with, you know, with, with more physical numbers of people through the door. Uh, you know, they're all just, you know, different levels of the, you know, massive, like, like Mm -hmm. tens of thousands of people, massive. (laughs) That's massive. Yeah, it Uh, it, it um, is crazy. 
you know, I, I've mm, always, you know, yeah, just I mean, gone like smaller boutique kind of myself, which is works well with this situation. And, and, you know, the, you know, if the next events we do are half as small as the events that we normally do, then, you know, it won't be that weird for us. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. We go the opposite direction of, uh, of massive crazy pack like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, what have you heard? Um, Cause I mean, from my view as just a tattooer, like, um, respectively, all of my conventions from 2019 or 2020 were been delayed, um, and everyone is delaying them. You know, um, there are some that are scheduled now in March, and people are asking me if I'm doing <sighs> them. But it's I, like I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Like, uh, yeah, and you know, it's hard to tell whether they're gonna happen or not, or if they're gonna happen, whether they should happen. I mean, uh, I guess what I would say. You know, Dur Dur Durb pushed up Hell Cities to 2022. Mm -hmm, uh, exactly. You know, uh, you know, we're definitely moving the Rock River from July of this year, probably to to next year. Um, although, you know, as I was talking earlier, you know, it might get some sort of dates for October. You know, but but that seems, I don't know. You know, uh, I get my. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I like to have the art of, I like, I like to think that I have the art of projection of like what's going to happen. And I mean, as of now, I'm just seeing the, the numbers of actually like the vaccination getting out there. It's like, no, nah, I don't really think that it's going to happen. Um, well, but you know, then, it, then again, it's almost like you have to get your foot in the door, get your place in the convention resolved. And then, you know, at least flights are, you know, being pretty cool about returning, you know, ticket fees or at least points. Yeah. And I mean, to reschedule is not bad. I know a lot of people that did that. They were like, oh, well, I'm going to sign up for Minneapolis just because it's going to be so packed anyways. If it gets canceled, at least I have, you know, my foot in the door. I'm, I, I'm in no way to do anything like that because I think I have like $6,000 of stuff just sitting there from 2020 that I'm like, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to tell me when they're ready and then right. I'll do it. Um, yeah. It's a, tough to commit. You know, it's not only for, for the artist to make plan, which is a little easier as far as your comfort zone, that's it's up mm -hmm. to you, but for organizers so cool. that needs, you know, a year of planning, you know, uh, and, oh, and yeah. serving things and, you know, all that to mm -hmm. say that you're going to do a convention at a particular time. It just not really safe to say mm -hmm. that for the amount of investment and uh, of time and financial. Right, Gabe? So yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't even be going to like part of it's for me, like I, it's hard to start planning a convention if I wouldn't actually commit to going to a convention. <laughs> you know right I mean uh, that's what I wonder about like these promoters that are just going for it you know like that's mm -hmm. a lot of confidence because that's a lot of investment and I just have to assume that they're they've got their insurance for whatever that may be right well you know that there's a lot be, of that would be why you know, well the the venue might be pressing them you know because mm -hmm. you know a lot of venues are accommodating and get it uh but you know some venues might not be Mm -hmm. uh, well, and again, part of it's like, you know, some people just don't give a fuck either. And they're like, whatever, I'm going to do whatever oh, is you know, legal in the you know context of the law. And if that yeah. means that I could put people, you know, with in larger booths or every other booth, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why this gets extended, you know, or why the, you know, the lockdowns and all this shit's going to get mm -hmm. extended is because, what did I see? Okay. Sorry, just to get a little political real quick. Like I was on one of the message boards and there was somebody that was outraged that one of the churches was getting fined and they were like, we should hang the people that are doing the fining of the churches and the people that are doing, you know, enforcing the lockdown. And I'm like, wait, that's both sides. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> holy shit. Like, wait, can we slow down wait. just a little bit? Like you, like the people that are trying to lock everything down are doing so because not everyone is locking down. Like if, but if you want to let people gather together, Oh man, I don't, you know, it's just complete yeah. insanity. I uh, I have been pretty brutal and like my terminology towards people because it's I don't know I have a very Floridian mindset of like when people are messing with you it's very much a stand your ground state 
and mm -hmm. you're it's very vocal so i've been having you know the issue I'm, I'm hiring a new counter girl right now and she's wonderful and we had a we had a mailman come in and he wasn't masked so i just abruptly like sir why do you want to kill all of us please put on your mask the fact that you're taking so long to put it on tells me that you're you're just faking it or you're not capable um <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And she was like, I can't believe. And I looked at her I was like, you can say worse if you'd like. And she's like, this is amazing. I can say this. And I'm like, please, because this is ridiculous that they're just, if they think that their freedoms are being taken away, actually my freedoms are being taken away for basic safety. Um, uh, what was the other thing that I, somebody wrote? And I'm, like I said, I've been doing my very best to like limit my Facebook my, especially my scrolling to like less than a minute, you know, like less than five minutes a day. I have a little timer, but uh, there was somebody <laughs> that was like, what did they say? They said, uh, well, if masks work, why is it getting worse? And it's oh, like, I'm, dude, you asshole, there's an uh, argument about masks. That's what's making it work. Like not everyone's wearing, like, like are, you, are you fucking kidding me? You're trying to, you're trying to consider. That's oh. a fallacy. That's a red herring, I think, in ethics, where you're not taking away actually like, no, masks do work there as a preventative. They're not like a hundred percent cure all. Well, and, and that's, if that, that's the point. And if 30% of the people don't wear them, then all of a sudden it's like, well, who gives up? Like whatever. Who gives up? Yeah, exactly. And so, I've been straight up calling people fascists because they don't care if the, the weak or the old die, you know? And I'm like, okay. I see where you're at, you know, but then again, I'm coming from a point where my sister is extremely immune compromised and I really don't want to see her die. So I just, uh, it's, I don't see it as political. I see it as, you know, one science, you know, it, it's, it's just science. Sometimes I'm cursed with a, you know, almost biology degree. Um, but it really is just science. It's just science. And then it's, you know, some fragile ego issue for a great amount of population that just wants to stand up for something. And they think it's the mass. Um, but I mean, we haven't experienced our real lack of freedom because the mass really are not the lack, like we're, that's not it. You know, there's plenty of other things to fight for than wearing the mask. Like, a, so the, speaking of tattoo conventions, uh, Alex mm -hmm. Van Dutch was uh, posting up some videos from uh, a convention in Vietnam that happened last weekend. Oh. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, again, they like really lock people down when they're locking people down. So they've, you know, have like no cases for two or three months now. Oh, wow. And uh, it, was, it was pretty amazing. Now, the other thing that was amazing, and, uh, and yeah, go to the uh, World Tattoo Events uh, Facebook uh, mm -hmm. streams, like the back pieces and the large pieces that were there were pretty fucking impressive. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, they're killing over there. <sighs> Yeah, I know. it was uh, like, makes me want to break my hands and just like, all right, I'm going to throw in the towel. I would love yeah, to go over there. Yeah, it, it, it agreed. And uh, yeah, if, if I was to be uh, like, I'm lucky I don't draw or anything. So like, I just look at it, I'm like, yeah, that's great. I can't wait to go. But if I had to compete with it, <laughs> not compete with that shit, but like, you know, everyone, but everyone's doing great work again. It's all about different flavors of, uh, of well, good I mean, stuff. There's a yeah, there's a strong side of a competitive nature with this. I mean, I, I'm naturally competitive and it's not like a, um, a, a screw you, I'm going to be on top. I'm going to be the best. It's almost like this is so much fun that I'm going to kick your butt and then we're going to have fun about it. <laughs> and, then, and yeah, like it's, that's how I have fun. It's almost gets, gets the fire under my butt going and it's all it's all good chum kind of fun. Yeah, put it where healthy competition is healthy oh it's extremely healthy i love it when someone can rightfully kick my butt in something you know it gives me a challenge it gives me something to work for like um every painting i make is somewhat better and different than the last one i do because i've like noticed something wrong with it or asked or asked annoyingly one of my friends to tell me what's wrong with it until i you know, until I get an answer that's somewhat negative, um, I'm not satisfied. Um, hey guys, I'm sorry, I don't want to be rude, but I have to go. And no, uh, go it. it was a pleasure watching you guys. And uh, thank you, Renee, for, for sharing your art. And Oliver, your tiny little painting. 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. It was really good meeting you. And next time I'm in Florida, I really have to come and say hello. Yeah. And just so I can be Bye. like, I made it down. <laughs> yeah. And Gabe, I'll see you soon. And uh, awesome. Let me see. I'm just save this message for the people from Brazil there. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, one of the next ones will, uh, you guys could be setting up your painting easels and uh, showing off some of your paintings. Yeah. 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 Paint Thank you us. very much, man. I Cheers. appreciate it for the invitation. I'll see you guys soon. All right. Absolutely. Have a good night. Take care. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Gabe, a lot of people thought that it was more of just like a viewing thing. And I was like, who would want that? <laughs> you know, um, uh, like, people, people dig watching, but uh, I mean, ultimately, you know, we primarily do this f for ourselves and for our own communications. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the audiences are great. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller. But, uh, mm. you know, the, being able to connect people together. Is, uh, oh, that's what I want. Yeah, no, I got more like, no, 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 this is us like having fun together. And everyone, oh, you know, it was kind of like a, oh, we thought we were just watching you. I'm like, uh, so I think, so, uh, and honestly, it's been, it's been a, a rough year. Everyone right now is like working their butt off. Um, I've, I think everyone right now is like pretty busy tattoo wise, myself included. Um, I mean, if you can tattoo, you're busy tattooing. Like, yeah, thank, exactly. You know, like, thank this you guys is our time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this pandemic was awful in so many ways, but now that tattooers are like back in action. Uh, my clients say that, you know, since they can't go outside, they can't go out drinking, they can't yeah. do anything, that they're just like getting tattoos. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the. Amazing. Uh, if the gods of tattooing, if you sacrifice enough to them, then, you know, they're, uh, well, you know, <laughs> treat us better than most, uh, better than way most, like, holy could be Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Holy but Jesus. Way, way, mo like, way, way, way most. Yeah, it's, it's hard to describe to people what we do. I just... Um, you know, I, I, the number one question I've gotten from people is, you know, almost a sadness to their voice when they're, oh, how's it going? And I'm like, oh, great. And they're like, is the studio? Is it okay? I'm like, yeah, we're fine. Why? They're like, oh, really? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, and they think, you know, like, I, I think it's like a new perspective that people, that like, people make appointments and do this, you know, um, and get tattooed. Uh, yeah. as like a as a constant thing you know you know uh my I, i'm trying to figure out how to tactfully say something you know <laughs> i but, love your like, tactful yeah you know so it, it, I, you know i went through a little bit of a rough time in the last couple of years and i don't talk to my mother mm -hmm. like very much at all but uh, uh, oh. over the last year or two uh, in some of those conversations She's literally been like, I think, you, sh you know, you should probably just, you know, all those tattoo people, they're all still, you know, kind of, they're not very trustworthy, clearly, you know, obviously they're harmful people or whatever. And it's just like, okay, I'm going through some rough times, but the tattoo people are actually still what, what's keeping me alive. Like mm -hmm. literally uh, putting food on my family's table, like uh, there's no way I'd get, you know, to, you know, the, the fact that there was still disdain in her voice about tattoo people was mm -hmm. uh, just really, truly, it's like, I, I don't even know what to say except for uh, seriously, tattooing has, you know, uh, ha hasn't always been easy, but it's always given back, you know, the, the, you know, the energies that you put in, it gives back amplified. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's what's it, it, it's unbelievable uh, how empowering it is. And uh, I guess mostly I'm just sad that there's still people that are like, you know, tattooing. Ew, ew, ew. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know what to tell you except for it'll it'll take you anywhere in the world that you want to go, you know, mm -hmm. either as a client or a tattooer, you know, especially as a tattooer, but even as a client, if uh, 
you know, if you let it. And uh, but it also fucked you up. You know. Um, no, I'm well. I mean, if my whole family thought I was going to be some either a worldly scholar or some worldly fine painter, um, and I was even going to school like for biology for some really specific things. Um, and then when I f- was kind of in the midst of it, it's you know when I started like really getting into tattooing and also discovering that our country has pretty much taken away every budget down. <laughs> down south where I needed to go to continue my study um, and I couldn't have any foundation take me or anything so I start tattooing you know and realizing like okay now this is an awesome like this is an awesome trade that I'm enjoying and I think I'm good at let me and then the years went by and I started you know that love that you find yourself like in with it and that obsession and you can't stop and you know traveling and then all of a sudden I'm finding myself having contacts to exactly where I wanted to go as a biologist and Mm -hmm. so then I went Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I got to do a lot of my own self-studies and so so basically yeah tattooing got me to like like not very far away from Antarctica and I was able to like base myself out on an island for like two weeks and do my studies and I was like I can't believe and I just like tattooed like three people on the main one <laughs> and <laughs> like amazing it was amazing. that's awesome yeah yeah like what other career could you possibly like I can't think of one you know, they, and those people let me stay on their couch, gave me their guest bedrooms. They fed me, they drove me wherever I needed to go. Like what the, like how it's, it's hard to describe that to my family when they're saying, you know, oh, you just wasted your education. <laughs> and I'm like, well, uh, I no, <laughs> maybe. Um, and I don't know, I think, yeah, it's like you can really make, like they say your apprenticeship is only what you make of it. I think your career is also what you make of it, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, your career, life, I mean, it's, uh, I mean. Yeah, life. Na- like, I only na- think na- of career. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, na- 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 you know, it's like surfing. Like, we're, we are plopped into an environment, uh, you know, that is beyond our control. Uh, but on the other hand, like if, if you don't try to make those micro adjustments or try to change your world, it'll never change for the better. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, the only thing, you know, it's not going to be a very positive life if you don't think positively. Now, on the other mm-hmm. hand, just because you think positively doesn't mean you're not going to get killed in a hurricane or by a fuck a tarantula. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That, I'm incredibly not, dark, but perfect. incredibly positive. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, uh, Oliver, has, uh, w- w- what were your communities, w- were you encouraged to tattoo or were you discouraged to tattoo? Um, because of the corona? Or... No, 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 no. So when you were growing up, what, did your parents and did your family encourage you to tattoo? Oh, okay. um, mm, yeah, my mother, she was skeptic, but... Mm. Finally, later she saw, okay, I can use some talent and stuff because I didn't learn some something really, uh, I didn't finish a lot of stuff. And <laughs> then she saw, <laughs> okay, it's the right thing, you know, but at first, okay, uh, they was skeptic about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you, have you tattooed them? Have you tattooed either of your parents? Not yet. Huh? Not yet, huh? but not yet, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've all experienced, like, I, I've only met a couple tattooers that have had, like, supportive ass parents, you know. I think they all start out as skeptics. And now, I mean, they couldn't be prouder because they yeah. see that I've done something with it. Uh, but that it, uh, there's that initial, you know, that that initial yeah. um, fear. Uh, sometimes. In, uh, yeah. I mean, I've definitely talked to a lot of tattooers, I mean, a lot of second generation tattooers, uh, you know, there's, there actually are parents out there who are supportive and open-minded with their kids. Not a lot, but there are, they, they, they exist. Yeah, they're uh, there, they're there. But, you know, the yeah. second and third generation tattooers are, are it's in their blood. Mm-hmm. I, I'm the third generation, 
and in this time when I started over tw 25 years ago or something, then uh, it was not really accepted. And right. Nowadays, you go to from the university and you get you become tattooer and it's a good job. But then it was like criminals and bikers. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Outlaws. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Um, we we were lit, we were talking about the the transition earlier you know, uh, before we went live Renee and I mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah tw yeah twenty five years I guess because I start I started hanging out at the tattoo shop in like ninety three ninety four mm -hmm. uh, you know just as a you know as a client but as a you know pretty quickly as a computer geek you know working for a tattoo shop but uh, oh we need yeah. you. Oof, the Ooh, the yeah. differences of, you know, holy Moses. <laughs> yeah, it's very different. I mean, yeah, some of them are hard to talk about, honestly. Like, I've, I have so many stories that I will tell people that are on, like, the very cusp of, that's kind of shocking. I probably shouldn't say that, you know, to, um, but then I, no, I'm not really telling the really shocking stories. Like I'll save that for the book and that people will find when I'm dead, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, so um, you guys know how, okay. So this is what actually happened. Um, <laughs> um, Cause yeah, it's, it, I mean, the shit that they could get away with was, I mean, impressive, you know? Um, and I think, I, 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 I think honestly that I, I, I'm proud of the fact that I got to witness some crazy culture like that or anti-culture, whatever you want to call it. Um, it counterculture. <laughs> counterculture. Yeah. I, I feel like I've experienced a whole lot of things. I've um, that most people, my age and my sex don't even get to think about happening in the real world. And I've always been able to vanish into the wall, you know, when really scary stuff happens. <laughs> so I've made it out alive. And I'm like, wow, I saw that. Whoa, okay, cool. On to the next, you know? Um, but maybe my, I, I love storytelling. I love like thinking about visuals and all of this is just stories for me. Like uh, I'll, I'll tell them later, you know, um, to inspiring young tattooers that would love to hear crazy stories like that. I don't know if you've ever read Gabe the um, or Oliver the Philadelphia Eddie books that he came out with. Have you ever read those? Yeah, no, I listen to some of the podcasts, uh, which I believe are uh, transcriptions of the book. But uh, but no, the answer to that, the official answer to that is no. I read the Sailor Jerry book, but not uh, the Philadelphia Eddie ones. Oh well, I mean, I I, I don't know about the podcast. I'm a, I'm a book reader, um, but yeah. they are just wonderful, and it's it, they're written like he talks, so yeah, yeah, you can yeah. kind of hear that strong narrative of his like his pace and his certain gruff up voice. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're coming straight. I'm sure the uh, podcast. I'm gonna look it up here. Uh, for the... I think it's wonderful education, even to the younglings, as I've been calling them, coming up, you know, the young professional tattooers that are trying to breach uh, this world, I think it's really important for them to know, like, what, what it was, even as close as, you know, Philadelphia, you know, um, like, what it was like not that long ago, and, you know, I've, I've tattooed at his studio, I've tattooed, like, in that world, and it, yeah, I can see those things panning out quite easily, and I think once you're there, everything becomes really believable. Um, I just hope no one thinks that I'm just some crazy batty old lady, or maybe I do. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, oh, they will. Here, I'm going to. Uh, oh, they will. Oh, I, they I think, will. Uh, I could actually play some of what you're talking about here. The uh, the other movie that's uh, pretty sick is uh, Hori Smoku. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't seen that one. I'll play the trailer here. It'll take a, it's a two minute trailer. Okay. Can you hear it? Oh, you know what? YouTube stops me from playing movies sometimes. Isn't that crazy? What did you do? Know. It must detect <laughs> that I'm like zooming or something. Oh yeah, maybe. They don't want you sharing their precious YouTube information on your Zoom calls. Wow, exactly. 
uh, I mean, I guess who the hell knows? Cause it is like a zoom to a stream to a restream. Well, it's like, oh, point wow. is crazy Philadelphia Eddie and the Apple podcast. Uh, I'm sure it's the, him doing the interviews that you're talking about reading and they are mm-hmm. amazing. They're amazing. Um, And I just, I wish that that history, even though I I think, you know, all the bad stuff that came with it, because yes, those are criminals, some of them, um, just doing their lifestyle shit, you know, um, in a community of fragile artists. um, I'm glad that that is changing. But there's some of it that's like, I don't think this should be forgotten. This is some crazy stuff. This is some crazy entrepreneurship. One, survival. Two, like they just survived, you know, like, and they governed themselves, which was really kind of impressive. And, and I got to experience that a little bit, just working in downtown St. Pete, um, when it was really scary and it was kind of dangerous and drunk all the time. Um, like there was a, there was a lot that I learned, you know, just from being around that kind of environment. God bless it. Um, yeah. but, but their stories now, now it's getting way more PC. I remember, um, I can, I, uh, I can, I can say this cause this guy literally got ran out of town, but there was this tattooer here in Oklahoma city. That was just a real scumbag. Um, and, uh, the first time I ever met him, he came up to the studio where, me and this girl worked and it was just us. And it was like, we were obvious, like the hippie girls that like, we, you know, we're mean and no harm. We're just doing our shit. Everyone knew this. Um, But he came up to the studio and parked his motorcycle, like and blocked our front door with it. Mm -hmm. And then like snuck in, you know, and (laughs) I'm just watching him do it. And then my boss, um, she was like, Renee, oh my God. And I was like, nah, I got this girl. (laughs) <laughs> and then just like met him head on like hi excuse me could you move your fucking bike come on we can go talk and he was just <laughs> so he was so took that he didn't know what to do like uh-huh. he was obviously there to try to intimidate us and so I just kind of sat him down in a chair immediately I was like hey you know that it's two girls working here right that's it we're just two young very tiny girls what are you fucking doing and <laughs> By the end of it, he invited me to a fucking barbecue. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. I'm not coming to your fucking barbecue, you (laughs) asshole. Um, But that kind of training came from working with outlaws. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I I fear my niece who will never know how to do this in case something crazy happens to her, you know? Like, how do I even tell this story? Like, how do I even, like... You know, so they, it's believable to this younger generation. Cause I don't think, I don't know if they'll experience violence like that or like aggression like that, you know, or know what to do. Well, to and therein lies it. the, that's uh, a little bit of dirt, you know, e- e- eating a little bit of dirt is good to, you know, you know. Oh yeah. Strengthen the immune system. To strengthen the, the immune system. And, yeah. uh, and again, it's like, we shouldn't be feeding people dirt. Like it's not good, but like, uh, and, and trying to figure out, well, you know, when people say stupid shit, like, you know, is uh, just figuring out where the line is where like, you can't return or you're cut out or no, no, what, actually, can you please try to correct your behavior? Right. right. And right, it's right. like, you know, if you, if you just like shut people off, they're not going to correct their behavior. You know, exactly. if you give them the opportunity to correct their behavior, and they fucking, you know, screw you again. Well, now, mm-hmm. now whose fault is it? Uh, ah, wait a minute. Now we have to ha- make this decision, you know, hundreds of times, thousands of times. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is going to be great. Uh, uh, but, yeah, uh, I, I just had a cleansing of Apprentice at my studio, too. Because, I mean, yeah, we've kind of the same thing. Like, we are so sweet to everyone. Um, I mean, I, I, everyone says that I'm a character builder. Um, but sweet like uh, my intentions are always to give people opportunity especially when there are no jobs right now you know I can make jobs Um, and also for apprenticing like I'm like yes I can teach you how to tattoo but also I'm going to teach you some elements that you'll need to know how to protect your clients protect yourself you know Um, 
this and that, but you just, if I notice that you're coasting and I, you know, I try to do as possible where you get written notice, you get verbal, you get all these things where I'm like, please correct your behavior because it's not working, you know, but as soon as they, you know, I, I don't know, we had this huge discussion about one, it's like, we really, really wanted to help her out and really wanted to get her through. But I was like, at what cost to our sanity into our reputation is it? Um, and that's what I think these kids are going to learn is that we're, yes, we can do all these things and be really sweet and be really kind, but we can only take it so far. Um, you know, yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest lessons to learn for everyone always is it's not about, it's not about us. Yeah. It's you know, not about, it's about, it's about you. Our clients. It's about yeah. them. Uh, and, uh, Absolutely. You know, when you're teaching somebody how to tattoo, you are literally opening up the keys to the kingdom. As you were saying, you know, very few, if no other, especially artistic professions, can you sample the top tier of people, of all, of mm -hmm. all people. And, <laughs> uh, you know, you could literally travel anywhere in the world. And if you're talented enough and dedicated enough. I mean, it's not, I'm not, it's not trivial. Clearly it's not trivial. Uh, it's not even close to trivial. It's one of the yeah, hardest no. things to be able to master. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the flip side is if, if you can do it, you know, um, yeah, again, the gods of tattooing it. are very kind. <laughs> they are very kind. If you sacrifice your time and your energy towards doing good work, and your family and life and, and your yeah, friends. Well, <laughs> the family life has suffered greatly, but the gods understand. <laughs> um, no, I honestly, and, and being a good person that is caring, um, like, mm -hmm. I think I've gotten more people to be my friend and help me out traveling and accommodate completely because they know that I can like help them in the kitchen or I can help them with their kids or like there's a level of trust there you know like here's the key I'm like cool I'll make sure everything's good you mm -hmm. know um and I think like that's also something that's dying like I was always raised to just kind of put myself in there like put myself into the situation and just like not even really ask just do um, and I feel, I fear that, you know, after just my own experiences with some of the younger generation that's coming up, they don't know how to do that, you know, um, and where, I mean, when you're traveling, you do have to count on people that you're like either working with or that you're staying with, you know, and I have had so many awesome, awesome opportunities because I just interjected myself in their routine. Um, and I'm always welcome back because of it too. Um, and I, I, you know, I just, I fear that they're uh, lacking a little of that, uh, that fire, of that uh, <laughs> tenacity, you know? Um, but, you know, we'll see, we'll see how they go. They've got a couple years to catch up. Um, but no, the, the, the new babes, you know, yeah, they're, they're in for it. They're in this, like this whole new industry or this new, this industry is like becoming newer and newer with all these new cool inventions and ways of things. I'm kind of excited to see if they add any to it. Um, but I hope that it doesn't kill out like all the traditional fun stuff that we've been able to do. Nah, nah. I mean, yeah. uh, I suppose, uh, nah, I don't even think so. I, I, nah. <laughs> you know, I, I think about like the, the music industry, you know, and how that kind of got co-opted by, you know, oh, the no. multinational corporations and whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it took, I don't know, was it, you know, the first time rock and roll was on TV, 30 or 40 years before the first time tattooing was on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, tattooers are... So again, they're, they're very self-enabled, self-empowered. Like you don't have to work for anybody you don't want to. But you can open up your own shop. You know, mm -hmm. you, you could open up a private studio and keep it really simple, stupid. Uh, exactly. but, you know, uh, so it's there's only a limited amount. Like tattooers uh, literally only let people in that they want to let in, and mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, wittingly or not, again, obviously there's a lot of people that just draw in robot mode or whatever, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but the point is, you know, um, you know, you tattoo on people and if you do an awesome job and show them a really good time, they, they come back with their friends, no, no matter where right. you are, uh, no matter, you know, now the better the environment, uh, you know, obviously the, there's a lot of variables that you can, you know, work in your favor. Right. But, right. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've seen so many people like, um, like have either a huge shop really huge walk-in scenario or you know you basically have to send a carrier pigeon to get their attention and you know drive to them out in the middle of the woods and I mean we really could adapt to kind of anything um wouldn't that be amazing like that would be a retreat like just having a tattoo studio out in the middle of nowhere or on top of a mountain you have to climb um, well you know you might see one soon yeah. Down a nice dirt road. <laughs> yep. Uh, Take a left up the tree. Um, who, who's a, you know what? I saw a tattoo sanctuary on Instagram and I was like, what the tattoo? And it was like literally a, a private studio in the middle of the Welsh countryside. And at first I was a little pissed off. I was like, that was my fucking idea. Well, I, I, that's, I, 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 but then I realized it was a friend of mine uh, uh, from, from, you know, he's a magazine oh. editor. And I was like, ah, okay, that makes sense. And that's cool. Okay, okay. You got the tattoo sanctuary. The, you know, uh, a couple other people, uh, Amy Cornwell, I think, recently just got a, a cool little farm somewhere. And actually, that might be in Wales, too. Uh, yeah, like all a, of that would be amazing. Um, yeah. I think, um, I know, but I mean, it's all state by state because I thought about how cool would that be, too here in Oklahoma, but they're pretty, I mean, I know Pennsylvania. I, what about your parts? Like, can you, are there people that have like home studios? No, not, yeah, no. I mean, I mean you, you could certify one. Oh, and okay. uh, as I'm, as I'm thinking about exactly where I'm going to put an office or something, I'm, you know, uh, you know, we could probably, well, again, it, it's kind of up to the, uh, to the local uh, zoning and whatnot. But like, if you could have like a home haircutting, you know, salon or something, then I'm sure you can get a one, uh, uh, you know, legal. Yeah. But it's it's yeah. not like commonplace. Yeah, that would be the ideal dream of retirement. I think it's just like have like a container house shop in the back or something. Yeah, it's uh, you know, if, if you, you know, uh, guy, guy's got a pretty amazing setup with uh yeah it's like not an in-law house but like an uh, you know a studio that's kind of uh you know separate from the living you know living house but uh right. oh, you know, see, that's kinda, beautiful yeah, there he's got a beautiful uh, uh, uh woods around him too mm. it's like yeah, a full experience people, oh that's awesome yeah i would make people like you know sit in the garden for 15 minutes or <laughs> uh, you, you know it's that's you, you know, that's the fun part about tattoos. You can create the experience that you want to for people. Mm -hmm. I, and I that's a, an experience that people want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah um, here in Oklahoma, I mean, uh, I, you know, I've, t I've, t I've told you many times about my build out. Yeah. That's, sure, all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Oof. Um, <laughs> it's been going well. Um, but that's, that's what I've been doing here. It's like literally creating like, the environment, I mean, honestly, if I could create my own from nothing, it would probably be out in the woods, like, or on the top, top of a mountain, you know, um, with do. some cool mm -hmm. shacks, you know. Um, but this studio space is so big that I've been able to make it kind of like a Willy Wonka land of, like, oh, yeah, in this area is to promote this area, like, different lighting, different moods, like, different, you know tangible awesome. things that you can just kind of like change your mood you're in just by the color and textures around and oh my gosh uh, it is ooh. fun oliver are you giving us a tour i'm gonna highlight you oh yes oh that's awesome hey we have the same colored walls oh i love doing these studio tours <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. All oh. right, all right. I'll give you guys mine. But you gotta wait. You gotta wait until he's done. Is he done? Oh, 
Oh, there he goes. Oliver, how big is your tattoo studio? This is the new uh, place for the tattoo. But before, mm -hmm. this room was a tattoo studio. Mm -hmm. But now I live here. That's beautiful. Oh, so you have an apartment uh, there too? Uh, nice. That's dope. You make music too? Yeah. Oh, could you uh, could you email me or, or DM me or somehow get me uh, a link to some of your music? Yeah. Of course. Awesome. Next time, no? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Anytime. If you uh, send a link in the app, that'd be perfect. Your studio yeah, is Right beautiful. now I cannot go in the app because um, the stream is on. Oh, yeah, 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 after, after. Okay, so let's see. Have this beautiful wall. Oh, yeah, the brick walls. <sighs> the library. Oh, shit. And then we zoom around. So just go a little slower. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Da, 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 and then, so this is like the artist library that I've set up. Uh -huh. So it's it's just full of references and museums oh. and collections and uh, I got some octopuses. Put uh, the painting, you? Uh, holy shit! Oh. Yeah, yeah, this is my this is like the whole octopus wall of my stuff. Wow. And then it's like the main wall, and then this table here is like a giant light table as well. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, huge. And then. Da -da -da. And then I just finished this wall, like not that long ago. So we have some nice coverage there. Everyone's getting, I have a build out um, in February too that I'm not doing, thank God. Oof. And this guy, that's my booth over there. I'm both like and missing a tattoo shop and having a heart attack at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other side of the gallery wall, and then more stuff. Nice. Then I got to do the floors, so the floors are really dope. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, this is a new like picture area that I just made. Uh -huh. and, yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. But yeah, this is my little home away from home. Hell yeah. But it, it's getting there, slowly but surely. How many people are working there? Uh, there's five of us right now. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think we're getting another person coming in, but we're, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. COVID has made things very interesting. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> made things a challenge, you know. Um, I'm really patient, like everyone knows that I'm just like, no, you guys just, you know, do what you need to do. Just follow the routines, keep, stay safe. Um, I'm pretty hands off as a boss, you know, I have, um, how many artists do you have, Oliver? Oh. I used to work um, with uh, five to seven people before, so four tattooers uh -huh. and two apprentices before, but since mm -hmm. one year, one and a half year, I'm alone now, I stopped it. Uh, and I, um, I, I moved, yeah. uh, tra transformed the, the place in a living room and music studio. Mm -hmm. And the waiting room is now the tattoo studio. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear that. It's what? been, um, has it just been harder restrictions where you're at? Or were you just like, no, I want the space to myself? No, I'm, I was tired. So it's like a convention every day. <laughs> it yeah. was. And the, the times changed, um, the, the apprentice changed nowadays. They, you know, they come for some months and then they, they don't have the power like before they, uh, yeah. I don't know, you know what I mean? I do you, very much so. <laughs> and and you, know, you need two apprentices at least to make a very big uh, job for, mm -hmm. for me uh, because I cannot do everything. Right. I cannot do everything at the same time. And now I'm just closed door and make my make my old customers 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite a place now. Yeah, um, that's yeah. That's what I was touching with before. It's like the um, there's a there's always there's a there's a time limit to apprentices. It seems. Um, I always ask my apprentices when it's done, you know, or when I have to either like this isn't working out, you know, have that conversation. I ask them when it started getting bad for them because it's always there's an there's an attitude or there's a there's like a uncomfortableness with them you know it's never a conversation of hey this isn't working out yeah. it's a mm, you know like I, I had one sass me under his mask <laughs> mm. you know and I was just oh my gosh I can't believe you just sassed me um but I asked them like what why uh and they're like oh I don't know it's just it was fun. And then all of a sudden it stopped being fun. I'm like, I mean, when we gave you responsibility um, and that's usually what it is, it's the responsibility and they don't want it. They don't, they can't see how this job is awesome mm -hmm. or a lifestyle really. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, I hear I it's, know uh, this is too much work to prepare everything. And this, I don't, yeah. The, to prepare the drawings every day and sit there mm -hmm. and, and yeah. Then they go to open an, another shop. And <laughs> just, just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. The, the knife in the back, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That thing. So I decided mm -hmm, to don't do it anymore. Yeah. No, I understand that. Your shop is beautiful, though. I bet you make cool stuff there. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe one yeah, day I'll find some one person, you know, to work with, and then it's good. Yeah. If, no, yeah. On the other hand, uh, you, we have, when I started, we have two shops in a, in this little uh, town. And now mm -hmm. we have 30 shops or something like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of realistic mm -hmm. stuff. So oh, yeah. we have to fight if you want to go get customers for the guests. Mm -hmm. A lot of competition, you know. And now I'm the only one to make, who makes Japanese. So I, I don't have any competition in this way. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Everybody oh, yeah. makes uh, realistic your other shops, so mm -hmm. there are no problems anymore. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. You know, and that's that's how it goes, though. It's like you have to, if you have a niche in an area, you'll, you'll be successful. Um, you know, um, there I, there's not a lot of people who do cover-ups in my area. Yeah. Um, and I actually rather like doing them you know, um, and I mean, I don't even, I don't even advertise that I do cover-ups, but mm. uh, through word of mouth, I mean, I, that's probably, that's primarily what I do. If you, you do know? some, if you do some good, the, oh, the yeah. friends come and they, yeah, because not mm -hmm. everybody can do it good. You have exactly. to have the eye to, to see what we can do with it. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's kind of scary because like I, I am, I am very much booked where I am here and I know that I do have that one, you know, product that I can make. And, um, I usually do refer, you know, people to my coworkers, but I know with cover-ups, I'm like, this is the one that I, I like, I can't say no. <laughs> Um, even though I'm like, I'm really booked, but I really can't say no to you because I know I'll, I know already what I'll do yeah. and I'll fix it. You know, <laughs> like it's that's like my one thing that I thank goodness I like it because I get asked for it all. I the got time. many cover-ups myself because I I did the arms full in the uh -huh. back in the days, and then another uh -huh. time cover up with some tribal stuff in the, in the nineties. Oh, then I course. went to Philip Louis <laughs> and uh, let it cover it again. So I have three oh, layers. Oh my gosh. Oof. I, I I'm know gonna have how three layers on my with, with bad tattoos. And, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I have uh, three layers on my leg right now. And it's, ugh. I think I have an unlucky leg. Because uh, every tattoo that's like put on there is like the guy's on drugs or something. Like really famous tattooers, sometimes you just got to be careful, you know? Mm. um and I have a crazy yeah I, I feel for the person getting a cover-up because it's it's kind of an always embarrassing story or something unfortunate or it's just something cheesy or uh, so I don't even really post when I do a cover-up I just show the tattoo 
as it is because let that yeah. old tattoo die yeah um, but yeah no I, I have a project I'm blacking out my leg um because mm. it's bad it's it's pretty bad <laughs> when you but, make cover you, you do the same like you do now with the underpainting you do I saw it as uh, Phillips he, he made some white Mm -hmm. In the area where the tribal was, he made it with uh, straight white and then uh, mm -hmm. the same mixed gray underneath mm -hmm. it. So we have like a um, brown. Right, right. Yeah, no, it um, it does kind of like, it does, I think, help with healing um, to kind of do it that way. Um, because already with the tattoo already there, there'll be some minor like topical scar tissue. So I like to just introduce new pigment into an area really calm like really loosely so sometimes yeah like mm -hmm. if you put down your blacks and your grays and that tattoo is covered then you know you're doing a good cover-up basically mm -hmm. like yeah. if i know i'm doing a bad cover-up if i can't cover it up with my, my with black mm -hmm. um seamlessly you know um because you just don't want a big black box of course but mm -hmm. um that's like a that's that's a good test to make sure mm. that you know you're actually going to cover that thing up because color is wonderful, mm. but you know it doesn't last. It comes back, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. It comes back through. Um, if you if you have one after, if it's black, the black is in after the lines, and you you see the new one, you have one. You wonder where. Yeah, you got one. it. Yeah, yeah. No, I was taught that really early on, and you know, thank good, thank goodness. Cause, I mean. Yeah, it's like we get to provide this um, another chance for people, you know, because mm -hmm. um, there are some really, I mean, with the with tattooing becoming so much popular, I guess, and like every generation, it seems it gets a little popular. And then, you know, there's fads and things like that, like tribal and all that. Like, I'm glad that we can figure out how to cover them up. I think that's actually how I started doing space. Uh, like outer space um, because a guy had so much tribal on his arm that there was nothing I could fit that would work except for space. And that was like my first real, you know, everyone had told him no. And I was like, Oh yeah, I can cover that, you know? Uh, and he was really, really happy about that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah that's the other thing, the people are really, really thankful after Yeah, yeah, that's the stuff that I like want to wake up in the morning and think about how I'm gonna live my life, you know, I'm like, no, I'm helping people, especially scars. Oh, I love covering up scars, or camouflaging, as we say. Um, people really, really, I mean, that's a whole like lifestyle change for some people. If you cover up their scars, they'll love you for life. I've One day I did a a breast um, uh -huh. a woman she got uh, operated after cancer and they mm -hmm, removed the yeah. breast and one of them and then i make three nicks mm -hmm. yeah and she was really happy she's so ha yeah they're so happy they're so thankful because the doctor does like you know say hey i can do this like nipple thing on you and it looks like something from scotland you know it looks like a torture device it looks like this little stamp that they just like stamp a nipple on you that's terrible but now like they're they're finding out like oh tattooers aren't just heathens they can cover up my you know my scar mm -hmm. or they can you know we can make them like custom things like like fancy bralettes or flowers or um basically anything that they would want and I love that people are just like, I give people homework assignments sometimes when I have consultations with them. If they're not quite sure what they want, you know, I make them like, go look at pretty stuff. What do you want on your boobs? Come back to me, you know? And then they have so much fun even doing that, like gathering information and like really thinking about what they would want instead, you know, not just, um, not just like a nipple, you know? Mm. which I think is really fun. But even when we do a nipple, I did it one time. Uh -huh. and, uh, because the doctors, when they do it, they use a permanent makeup machine and they don't get the ink in. So it looks yeah. really like crap. It looks, so I, yeah, it looks I bad. make it better and uh, like a, with a shading, like like a shadow of the nipple. 
Mm-hmm. And it looks from far away, you don't see the difference. So, oh, good. Course, yeah, Hell I did it yeah. once because the doctor did it before and he fucked it up. Yeah, they, they, like, they're not trained to do that stuff. We are, you know? I love that. And that, I mean, I think about it all the time because there is breast cancer in my family and everyone, you know, my doc, like everyone has asked me because they, of course, they're like, you, the tattooer, what would you do? <laughs> and like, honestly, I would just lop them off and get a full front torso. Huh. Um, that would be really cool. <laughs> um, and because I know I can do that, like that's the option, you know? Um, but I like the fact huh fucking cancer oh fucking cancer for real i know my my cat got cancer uh like two months ago and we had to take like this thing out of her leg but i mean it's got to come back but it fucking cancer fuck Mm. (laughs) it's so aggressive and annoying really makes life uh interesting But I don't know I, I think that that's like the one thing I can say that's changing in our industry too that's good is that, you know, like your typical grandma, your typical mom or aunt, you know, isn't intimidated to come talk to us mm. about that stuff. You know, they're like, yeah, that's cool. They, yeah, that's cool. Because I remember they were for a long time. They weren't really sure or they just like, you know, wobbled and drunk because they got the bravery. <laughs> yeah, but in all these years, it came so many old old women here. Um, one of them, they got really a lot of tattoos and she was, I think, nearly 70. Mm-hmm. What's, I think, um, yeah, I think the oh. oldest person I've tattooed was 71, maybe, like maybe, no. I think she definitely was in her 70s. I don't think she was in her 60s. Oh, oh. Hey, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but we have uh, three minutes before the reinventing the tattoo subscriber exercise. Hello. Oh, holy um, moly. Hello, hello. So if you are a reinventing the tattoo uh, subscriber, then yeah, it's time to kind of bounce on over to that channel and that's what I'm also going to do. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Renee and Oliver for beaming in. Oliver for beaming in. Renee for hosting. And um, let's see. Uh, one last message here from the forum here. We've got Pablo Rodriguez says, uh, this is from Spanish, uh, some great teachers. Greetings from Argentina between the rivers. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, well, um, like I said, thank you very much for tuning in and we will get some dates from Renee for the next time that she's going to be doing a, a paint night. And uh, yeah, th- thanks yeah. again, everyone. Time to well, go. Thank you so uh, much, Gabe. Have a good time.